Hey, good morning, everybody. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I do need that. This is great. I can't see all of you, so it looks like I'm just talking to about 20 people. So um, my name is Dana Quinn, and I'm a director at Intuit. I lead a group of AppOps engineers there, and I am here to talk about our lessons learned and how we're moving to uh, public cloud and how we're operating in hybrid cloud. So first, a little bit about Intuit. You hopefully know us from our products, which are listed up there. Our mission is to improve our customers' financial lives so profoundly they can't imagine going back to the old way. This is very powerful for us. We've been, uh, Intuit's been recognized as one of the most admired companies in the software industry and one of the best companies to work for for 14 years in a row. Intuit got its start with desktop software 30 plus years ago, but these days, two thirds of our revenue comes from online and mobile. So operating online applications well is uh, very critical to our company's success. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna talk about our lessons learned in a migration to public cloud and really how we operate in, in hybrid cloud. But it's useful to start with why we chose to move workloads to cloud. For us, we're really interested in speeding innovation in service of solving customer problems. We really wanted to enable small product development teams to be able to move quickly, to move at their own speed. We wanted to get out of their way. We were not, not directly solving for hosting costs. But we really hope you'd see a benefit there as well. And, and you'll see some of that uh, later on in the talk. So to start with, um, I want to talk about how we approach what workloads we started with. And it's good to set some context here. Intuit had been successful operating in legacy data center environments so far. But we didn't have a lot of knowledge about the cloud in the company and how to operate in the cloud. So we wanted to find those, those good first workloads that sort of dip our toes into public cloud so we could learn to operate safely and securely uh, before we moved a lot of stuff over. So for us, we started with two non-production uh, non-production use cases, build environments and load test generation. These are non-production, but they're, they're mission critical non-production non uh, use cases. They're very important for the productivity of engineering teams, for example. Um, also, they have this uh, benefit that both of them have very nonlinear usage patterns, and uh, they can really make use of sort of a lot of the on-demand uh, cloud capabilities. In particular, load test generation. If you're a US taxpayer, you wouldn't be surprised to learn, you would not be surprised to learn, that we spend a lot of time doing load tests to prepare for a couple days in the middle of April each year. And uh, uh, we do a lot of load tests throughout the spring, but after April 15th, we don't need to do as many load tests. And so uh, we really pushed our engineering teams to realize these on-demand capabilities so that we could realize the benefits of that. And we've seen those benefits. When we made load test generation something that is really easy for teams to scale up on their own and really easy, more importantly, easy to scale down on their own, we really got a lot of benefits and we were able to do a lot more load tests for a lot less uh, hosting dollars. So these two use cases are non-production. We wanted to get the benefits, we wanted to, to extend our learnings to production. So we started looking for what we think of as decoupled systems. And my feeling is all companies have these types of things. For, we were looking really at two sort of key characteristics. Uh, we would look for systems that don't interact with uh, your production data very much, your production sensitive data very much, and also ones that can host in a public cloud data center. They don't need to host right next to your core application in a legacy data center environment. They're okay being 50 milliseconds away. And so, uh, and they won't impact performance of your applications. For us, this was two main uh, set of use cases. We had a series of marketing websites that needed to be relaunched. We wanted to rebuild them and do a lot of uh, cool things with them. We, re we relaunched those in the public cloud. The second one's perhaps a little bit more interesting. We had a community Q&A site, and this is a place, say, like taxpayers can go in and ask questions about complicated tax uh, scenarios, and other users can, can answer questions about that. Again, a lot of usage right before the tax filing deadline, not so much uh, after that. And so this is a good reason to push our teams to, uh, our engineering teams, again, to realize good cloud patterns and make use of uh, on-demand infrastructure. So these, these went really well. Um, uh, we, uh, we, we got a lot of learnings from this, but uh, the learnings were really focused on, uh, on a small number of teams within a company. We really needed to broaden out across the company. So this is where we went with what a lot of other companies start with, is more general 
trying to get everybody to move their non-production environments into the cloud. And we've seen a really interesting pattern of um, dev environments, uh, on-demand dev environments. And say an engineer uh, needs some, some uh, resources to test against, they can instantiate an environment very quickly, test against that, and more importantly, uh, after a couple hours of non-utilization, we can spin down these environments very quickly, save a lot of money, but uh, the engineers are very, very productive with this. So these have been some good learnings. Our next theme is uh, our choice of uh, which tool set to work with. Uh, should we choose cloud native or a hybrid tool set? The hybrid tool set was very interesting from an engineering standpoint. Um, you know, it's an abstraction layer that you can use in both your environments, use the same tools to manage, uh, manage both your environments. But we chose cloud native, and we really want to do that so that we could optimize for the future. We wanted to avoid things that add friction on the cloud side, and we really want to optimize uh, for the cloud side. We felt that cloud native tool sets give the best, uh, the most access, direct access to your cloud provider's capabilities. And the people we hire come in with those skill sets, and we really wanted to leverage that. And, and they want to work with those cloud native tools. One thing we talk about internally, though, is um, what about cloud vendor lock-in? Um, is this a problem? And this is a risk we're willing to take. We feel we made a good choice with our cloud vendor, and uh, we chose the leading one in the marketplace. We feel it's going to be that way for a while, and they match our capabilities. So, so we're willing to take that risk. We do reevaluate the environment every couple of years to make sure we're still good with that choice. So, so we've taken this risk on intentionally. So one danger of hosting and a hybrid cloud environment is that your legacy management patterns bleed over into your cloud environments. And uh, this, is, this is something to guard against. You really want to insist on the right patterns as you move to cloud. And I spoke about that earlier in the, in the workload slide when I talked about how we re really pushed our teams to do that. But one thing that really helps with that is the metrics you track. And I think when you're operating in cloud, you find new metrics to track. The big one for us is the average instance age. You want to keep that low. We never track that in our legacy data center. There was no point. Um, but in the cloud, that really shows if you're following good practices, shows if you're auto-scaling, it shows if you're doing things like running like Chaos Monkey on your environments and things like that. So that's really important. Just as importantly, the, these metrics can help you guard against anti-patterns. The big anti-pattern I want to guard against is if there's any manual setup steps in uh, bringing up a new instance, in, in the cloud, you're not going to be able to do auto-scaling. And hopefully you have the right metrics to show that when a team hasn't done that work. And so, so really think of the metrics to, to guide your, your journey in public cloud and really challenge yourself to realize these patterns. The final one's probably not a surprise. Um, track your costs. And this is just another gotcha when people are used to operating in a legacy environment. Your engineers aren't used to tracking their spending. You have to remember to shut the cloud off. We always, uh, we always celebrate teams spinning up environments quickly. There's not as much celebration when teams turn down environments quickly, and it really should be celebrated. The, the thing that we've done that's been successful here is we really empower teams to manage their own spending. We talk a lot about empowering small teams, and this is you know, part of our new mindset. We want to really enable small teams to manage their own spending. And what we found is that when we do this, teams find ways to make their hosting dollars go farther, and they get more work done with that. It's, it's been a really great learning. So you don't want to leave the cloud running and waste money. So I want to talk a little bit about Intuit's uh, results from this. So our workloads moved to the cloud have really blossomed. When we feel that small teams are being successful at getting new products out quickly and, and, and moving quickly in the cloud, we've really learned a lot about how to operate well in the cloud. And not surprisingly, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the elastic capabilities have made our hosting dollars go further. And really pushing the teams to realize these good patterns have helped a lot. One of the, the, the real successes is load test generation. Our amount of load tests have gone up 12 times uh, over the last two years because of the ability to lo launch load tests uh, on demand and shut them off automatically as well. So it's been a great, uh, a great learning for us. So I would like to stay and talk a lot more about this, but uh, I, I don't have time for that. But I do want to share we have some additional talks uh, uh, happening. Mint.com, one of our products, did move to the public cloud last year, and we have two leaders from Mint uh, giving, a, giving a talk this afternoon talking about their lessons learned uh, on their journey to public cloud. I think that'll be a great talk. We also have the chief architect of uh, Intuit Small Business Group talking about his patterns for scaling unstable systems. 
we have a booth, and come see us at the exhibit hall. And I want to do a special call out here. We are open sourcing our uh, load test generation system, uh, the, the one we use to load test TurboTax each year. We're open sourcing that, and we have a demo at our booth uh, for that. So please come by and see that. That's it. Thank you.